Hello YouTube. This is my Woodmaster outdoor wood boiler. And this will probably also be my very first upload for YouTube. The reason I'm making this video, I got a lot of help off of YouTube on installing this entire system. <clears throat> However, there were things that I simply couldn't find on YouTube and I had to really do a lot of digging and asking questions and talking to pro, uh, pros, pro plumbers specifically. So that's what today is about. We're going to go over installing the PEX piping, well, not, the, not the PEX underground, but the in-floor radiant heat system getting that plumbed to the outdoor wood boiler. On the back side of the boiler, I've got two primary circuits. One is heading to the house. That's this one over here. And the other side goes to my barn. I used inch and a quarter pecs but one inch is probably all I actually needed since everything on here is one inch M uh, NPT pipe thread. So one inch would have been fine, <clears throat> but figured I'd future proof it. It's, it didn't cost that much extra. So we've got our circulator pumps <clears throat> and that's something you'll have to figure out exactly, you know, for the, the distance and whether you got a grade. <clears throat> I put a mag filter in here I put valves everywhere and drain valves on the two or the supply and the return side I just used regular old boiler valves and then these flange valves I got one side on each that has a boiler drain that way if I need to fill it or drain it I can also drain it from here um, so very, very functional. I can fill, drain, uh, add, add off. And this boiler also has two extra, so, well, four total, but two extra, um, what are they called? Circuits, I guess you could say, for additional plumbing, if need be. All right, so we'll go inside the barn now. And this is the part plumbing the actual barn floor radiant heat to the boiler. I thought it was going to be a lot simpler than it actually was. And honestly, it's not all that difficult, but I didn't see any videos showing an outdoor wood boiler plumbed to a pole barn. So I'm hoping this will help somebody out someday. This is what I ended up doing. I had already had my two manifolds, supply and return, plumbed in. I've got eight zones. Each zone is approximately 300 feet. All right, so the thing I didn't realize that I would need is this guy right here. That's what's called a plate exchanger or a plate heat exchanger. I got a 40 plate heat exchanger this is a 2,400 square foot barn, you know, 40 by 60, 2,400 square feet, 40 plate exchanger. All right, so from the ground, underground, and I buried these lines six feet under. I live up in Northern Michigan, it gets cold, and these lines, a bunch of them anyway, a bunch of the line itself runs under areas that I plow, so the ground gets uh, frozen even deeper than normal. Okay. So I've got my supply coming up here, goes into the plate exchanger, comes back out of the plate exchanger, goes back to the barn. The boiler water never touches the glycol mix I have in the barn system. It's completely separated by the plate exchanger. All right, next we've got the actual supply and return. So we'll start at the supply pump. This is what's called the secondary loop. Got the primary loop, and then we got the secondary loop. We've got the pump, the controller. I just used a regular old, old school mercury style thermostat. I do have an extra uh, chunk of PEX up here that I've got laid in my concrete out to about the middle of the floor, and eventually I plan on putting an in-floor thermostat, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> All right, so from the pump, 
pumps it through to the inlet manifold or supply manifold, goes into the floor, comes back, right? Pretty easy. Each one of these is a individual flow rate uh, controller. And so are these actually. And, and these are shut off valves as well if you actually wanna shut off some of the flow, all right? Comes back each, the supply, supply and the return side both have thermostats. I did not put a pressure gauge in here. Um, I suppose you could, I didn't, but that's all right. Okay, the next thing that I did not know about is a mixing valve. This mixing valve is a must if you're doing in concrete, in floor radiant heat. All right, so we've got the water that comes out of the return from the floor, you know, usually 60 to 70 degrees when it's actually running. Right now, it's sitting stagnant and it actually back feeds a little bit and uh, it's not really, I don't know if it's just the, the glare or what, but it's 120 or just under 120 and the supply side is only at about 62. What is going on here? Well, 62, all right, that's what it's reading. Now, if I kick this on, just by cranking up the thermostat just a little bit, it'll change. So that's normal, that's what it normally does. So the water comes back out, hot water, or the used water, lukewarm at this point, comes through, and you see it says cold right here, so it can split off. This mixing valve decides how much to force through the plate exchanger. And I have the line so that the supply side of the boiler goes to the opposite of the supply side, uh, you know, the return line here. That way, as the water comes in this way, it mixes with the water going that way. And they're not touching, it's just going in between plates. And then it comes back out, the return, that's hot. This comes out of here close to 180 degrees. Mixes here, and then comes down and around, all right? Comes back up, goes into our uh, this is an aerator and then our uh, pressure tank. So the aerator, actually, this is one of the newer ones, Khalifi, um, has these little swirly doodads in there and then a little vent cap on top. So this helps get all the air out of your system. And we can go through aerating the system, but there's other videos on that. This setup right here is what I couldn't find on YouTube. And maybe it is out there or something similar, but not from an outdoor wood boiler. I couldn't find that one. You want a little bit of distance between your pump and the tank, and the tank should be on the suction side of the pump. A little bit of distance though, whether it's six, eight, 10 inches, something like that, I've obviously got a little bit more than that in here. That's it. So it's not all that complicated, but I had no clue about where to put a mixing valve because these floors, apparently you're not supposed to pump more than 120, 130 degree water into these floors, especially when they get cold and hot and cold and hot. Um, stress fractures, stuff like that can happen. On the other side of the manifold, we've got dr um, drain valves and aerators as well. And I'll tell you, this has been absolutely amazing. I cranked this thing up for the first time on Christmas Day of 2021. And it has been, I, I keep the thermostat set at 50 and it's usually right around 54 in here. 54 to 56. I gotta work on this uh, camera deal. Yeah. Anyway, 54 to 56 is what stays in here, and I love working in 55 degree weather. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna hold it still here for a second so you can take a still shot if you need, but this is the setup I used in my pole barn. In floor radiant heat, half inch PEX tubing, 300 foot loops i drew out my own uh, loops in the floor zones if you will i used just graph paper graphed it all out and uh ended up working out fantastic i kept the pipes about a foot away from the from the wall and then just ran a one foot grid everywhere back and forth and back and forth and i can turn up or down the temperature in any one spot but generally speaking you want to keep them as close as possible and then keep your flow rates uh at, I adjusted my flow rates, the, the longer loops, as I, as I uh, laid the loops in the, in the floor when I got back here, there's actually numbers on a thousand foot roll of pecs that show you how many feet are left. So I just did the math and I wrote down how long my loops were. 
the longer loops up here, I bumped up the pressure just a smidge, and then the shorter loops, I turned down the pressure just to kind of equalize the flow rate through the floor. Um, if you got any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them, but this really was a kicker for me. It took me months to get this nailed down the way I absolutely wanted it. I made my own um, rack here, if you will, or you know, a mount, a wall mount, out of just some sheet aluminum I had laying around. I bent it up. I wish I had a, a sheet metal break, even though that's uh, like 80, or no, not 80 thou, just slightly less than eighth of an inch thick. And it takes a pretty stout uh, break to, to bend that, but would have made that project easier. I got everything here is connected with dielectric couplers and they have the high temp seals in them. A couple places are a pain in the butt to adjust, like here. So I used the shark bites. That made it easier to slip the whole unit on and keep my uh, flange valves where they needed to be. Um, lining them up. These pumps, you always want to keep these pumps with the motor horizontal or parallel to the ground, I guess you could say. And yeah, it's, this has been absolutely fantastic in here being able to work in 55 degrees throughout the whole winter well half of the winter anyway um, these mixing valves in your instructions it'll show you what approximate temperature so three to four on mine is about 120 to 130 degrees and that one's a lot easier to read almost 60 degrees here and yeah i think that about covers it again if you got any questions I'll tell you anything I know. Um, another problem here with the inch and a quarter that I ran into, even though I only had eight of these crimp rings, there's not a lot of people that have an eight or an inch and a quarter or larger crimp ring tool. So I had to uh, have a buddy of mine who's a plumber come over and bring his really expensive tool over. Yeah, tool, he brought his tool. Anyway. Because I only have eight of those, I only needed to eight crimps. I wasn't going to go spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a crimp tool for eight crimps. But everything else I was able to do on my own. Um, I know not all of the solder joints are great, but it still holds. I didn't have any leaks out here. As a matter of fact, in the whole system, I only had two leaks, and those were inside on an MPT fitting just like that. Um, I don't think I used enough pipe dope, and I don't think I tightened it enough. Um, but outside of that, any questions, feel free to, to put it in the, the comment section down below. I will be more than happy to get back with you with any, any uh, suggestions or experience I have doing this. And I'm not a pro, I'm not a pro plumber, but uh, I did make it work and it has been amazing. Thanks.